All right, so um, hopefully you can hear my voice okay. It sounds kind of weird. Um, I am going into uh, my Helix here, and I've got a new... I kind of changed around my amp um, and my preset a little bit, so I kind of wanted to show everyone what I've done. I'm using a lower gain um, placator, or the Friedman model, and um, I'm going through an Ornhammer IR, which is actually... Um, it's a Marshall with EVH speakers, um, and I love it. It's a chunky, I think they call it the chunky sound or something like that, or the way they do the mics, and man, I love it. And I really like the lower gain. So the way I have it now, and I'm also gonna go through my whole chain, because I get asked all the time, how do you record or whatever? It's very simple, I don't know how to be complex. There's no trickery, I don't know any tricks. So I'm using a placator clean. Yeah, that's with, I'm using a Wolfgang EVH, a, a new one, a Mexican one, um, the cherry apple, candy apple red, sorry, um, which I love. That's, that's the bridge pickup. That's the middle pos position. I like that for what's, you know, what's supposed to be kind of acoustic sounds, right? I almost never use the front pickup, but and when I do, it's usually for uh, solo stuff. And I have a chorus and a delay on that. So without the chorus. And without the delay, there's just a little bit of a um, plate reverb on there. Okay, so that's my clean channel. Uh, you know, I'm using snapshots. It's the easiest way for me. So what I also love is that you can turn off the chorus and the delay, and then you can go back to that clean, and it's exactly the same without those. So, and if I want to just change back, I can always just go back to the preset, and it'll fix everything. So then I've got three gain stages, and they're not super different. It's just a matter of touch and feel to me. So... Um, the first one is, um, just a BE. Oh shoot. I just remembered I'm not wearing shoes. I'm going to get tortured on YouTube for this. All right. So the first one, the drive is at 6.8, then 8.1. And the difference is just ACDC to Van Halen. It's very little, but... I really like about this, you can turn down. I'm still getting highs and lows, which I love. And the higher gain, um, you can do it, but it never sounds as good. With a little bit lower gain in there. Helix actually responds really well. And another thing is I used to always put a noise gate after the amps in the chain, and I don't do that anymore. There's a noise gate um, at the input that's set at like 70, a negative 70, and sometimes I will bump that up if I'm playing in a noisy environment, but not having to use another noise gate I, I um, is nice. So anyway. Mm 
See, there's not as much bite in this. So I'm going to play Mean Streets a little bit, and you'll hear. There's just not as much bite. That little bit extra 1.3 or whatever it is of gain uh, makes a world of difference. So you'll see when I go from the BE and my um, second snapshot to the third one. And then I add in the HBE, which has that little, you know, the, the amp has the switch. Now this one, you lose some low end girth. It's more for solo. Ton of sustain with this, it's great. There's, you may hear a little bit of background noise, but when I switch over, it's like nothing. And that's, like I said, it's just a gate at the beginning, so it's it's great. I'm listening through in-ear. Um, in-ears, that's how I'm monitoring. The main from my PA is actually going right to the camera. So... <laughs> Anyway, great sounds with that. So how do I run this? Everybody asks me. This, and this is just my main channel. I probably use this about 70 or 80% of the time. Um, I can use the HBE for the heavier sounds too, like when I use my drop pedal. So I go, I use a G10. I go right into the drop pedal and into the Helix. And that's the quietest way to run the drop pedal. If you put it in a loop before a dirty amp, you're going to add, um, add hiss in there and you might want another... Um, noise gate. So I have a mimic, which are run in stereo and two loops, one and two. And I run that at the very end of my signal chain in the helix, right before the reverb. I used to not use reverb on the guitar except for certain songs um, where it's needed. And I used I use it for clean sounds, but not for distorted sounds. And I'm liking it, especially because with my in-ears, it just adds a little more stereo separation. So it's basically all I have on right now is I have on the input gate, the placator amp, the IR, going through the mimic and the loop, and that little bit of reverb at the end. So as Eddie and Sammy used to say, uh, there's no jape on there. Just uh, or no mojo, right? It's just no real effects. I don't like using compressors or EQs or other stuff. If you're not getting your sounds from your guitar and your amp, um, it's because of your fingers. <laughs> I mean, most stuff is going to sound pretty good. Um, you really need to work on your fingers and your technique. And when you get that down, then work on your sound. Um, and I play, man, at home, I do play through the Helix a lot, but I, I play a lot with just acoustic and the electric guitar is what I, what I mean is playing the acoustic, electric guitar acoustically and not hearing it amplified in any way. Um, I think you hear certain things that you don't hear otherwise, um, or that you're not paying attention to. Um, so I like to do that a lot. Um, you know, I hear fret ring or I hear, uh, bu you know, buzzing and, or I hear the tremolo bar vibrating in the, in the bridge, those kind of things. So uh, anyway, then, um, so what do I do after this? So I go XLRs out left and right into uh, Behringer XR18 um, board. So I'm going to show you all that. So 
So um, I'm running stereo out of that into my headphones, which are my, uh, my um, you can see down here the Sennheiser um, IEM on the right. And I'm using that for my, I'm using um, Sure Sure 215, I think, are the um, earphones. The ones that come with the Sennheisers were total crap. They didn't stand my ears worth shit. Um, these are better. They do, I think they even sound a little bit better. Uh, more isolating, which is great. More sound. So when I'm on stage, I can't hear anybody talking. <laughs> I've got it, but I've taken them out. I was really afraid that I'm running the IMs too hot. But I got to tell you, when I take them out, Oh my God, the, 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 the snare and the cymbals are so loud that I didn't realize how loud they were because you get so used to hearing that stage volume. I mean, we were running 4,000 watt monitors on stage. Now we're only running three because I don't need that extra one. I still need my, you know, my singer still needs two, I guess. It help, helps him hear himself better, but I don't have to run as much guitar and stuff through there because what I found out when I was going out into the audience was it was so loud on stage that the guitars and stuff were bleeding over and you were hearing almost more bleed than you were the direct guitar signal through the speakers, especially in the smaller, smaller places. And we're using 2000 watt uh, K12s with the matching bottoms, which are like 2000 or 3000 watts or something like that each. Um, and those subs are only doing that 80 hertz and below, but holy crap, it, you know, they, they can be loud. And I'm running on my, um, let me show you running on a uh, tablet so you can see everything here how I've got it set up um, it, this is man it's just been the easiest thing to be able to have this right here on my get to, on my stand right on my amps or my mic stand I can do everything from here I'm running in ear monitors which makes means I'm hearing everything that I want to um, man it's so so much better and I think I really am saving my hearing so how am I recording this as I'm going the headphones out of the X XR18 right into a zoom camera. So zoom Q2N is the camera of choice. Um, it's a great video camera for a very cheap price and doing it this way. Um, I just think you get a better overall sound. Um, even, and for live, I mean, you just have to know where the settings are. The screen is so small on this. Um, it's, it's like, imagine a TV screen on your watch. Like that's how small it is. It's so tiny. Um, probably even smaller than that really. So you just have to really be careful about how you set everything up um, on it, but otherwise it's good. So um, I'll show you through the rack. The other thing we have is we have a Sennheiser wireless for our um, vocalist. That runs into a TC Helicon Voice Live 2, which I actually MIDI control with my Helix. So even on the stomp mode, um, when I switch stomps, like so when I, in Crazy Train, the very first part, I've got a lot of extra distortion and delay for my guitar just for the very beginning. And then I have it set for him to do that, the part where he says, I'm all aboard. And it actually ping pongs back and forth, left and right. Um, it's going stereo into the board. So that's where you can see um, the stereo inputs where it says Lloyd, that's his name. So anyway, and I can run, um, the other thing great about this support is, I'm, I mean, I'm not using four channels, right? Um, we're using the 17 and 18 for, to run music into and stuff like that. It's got the headphones out. I could actually record a show with the headphones out right into this Q2N. Um, the problem is, is you're only getting the master, and so that the, voc the, the uh, vocals are really loud, the guitar is really loud, but the drums um, aren't that loud. Bass would, it sounds okay, but the drums really aren't very loud that way, so. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Like I said, no trickery. Um, I don't know how to do trickery. I just do things the easiest way for me, the easiest and quickest way. Make things convenient. When you're the sound guy and the guitar player, um, I write the set lists. Um, I do our calendar. I do our Facebook. I do a lot of extra work. So making this part of it as you know, easy as possible is much better. I only have to bring one speaker now. The singer has all the other speakers, less than two, and I have my IEMs instead of my, you know, two speakers. So um, this one box that I built and my, my pedal board. Everybody asks me about the pedal board. Road Cases USA 32 by 16, I think is what it is. Um, 
And what's great, and the reason why I leave it in here like this, I leave everything in here, um, dual lock Velcroed onto it, is because I can't tell you how many times my singer has spilled a drink right next to it. And if it was on the ground, it would have gotten sticky all underneath, right? These are on um, little, uh, you know, rubber, rubber feet underneath and stuff. It doesn't move around with that. Um, the other thing is having the mic stand attached to it with this um, railing flange, right? So microphone goes up. I can put on the microphone um, stand. I have a, a drink holder. I also put my uh, uh, my slide and picks on the mic stand when I have it set up live. I have lots of extra inputs. I use a um, digital pedal power, which powers the mimic. The bright switch, which the bright switch also powers my Line 6 wireless, and it also powers the drop pedal. Because they're digital, it needs to be digital to power those things, I think. Um, just helps a lot. So um, I only have to have two, use two um, inputs in the power supply here. So works great. So I'll play a little bit more, and then I'll end the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching.